welcome to 2C40 Gaming. I'm T. Lindsay B. 2C40 means we are too chill for debating video games. That means we're here to have a laid back, chill time because we love gaming, okay? So today I'm going to follow up my Xbox Skyrim Special Edition load order with a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 Skyrim anniversary edition load order we got a hundred mods we're gonna go through and i'm gonna take you through every single one this is gonna be a two-part video first load order which i'm just so proud of and the second video is going to be a playthrough where i get to show off some of these mods so you can see them in action so sit back relax Let's think of this as like, um, kind of like an ASMR gaming experience, maybe. It's gonna be really chill. If you have any questions or you would like to share any mods that you like with me or that you think will complement this load order, definitely drop that in the comments, okay? Let's get into it. Top 100 mods in a stable load order, starting with the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, which fixes pretty much most things that the vanilla game didn't fix. Tons of patches here, followed by Haste. Haste is a really, really good mod. It's like mandatory in your load order. Makes a bunch of gaming tweaks, pretty much just, well, gameplay and quality of life tweaks. I can give you guys a few examples. Uh, the original haste or the regular haste uh, made it so that NPCs no longer randomly greet you. Um, it increased the bounties that you get for certain crimes to make the game more immersive, as well as carriage rides have increased costs. Um, torches illuminate more area. Um, it even like fixes like if attacking while sneaking you will no longer like yell out just random things like that quality of life and gameplay fixes what haste tweaked does is it adds a few more features to complement the original haste um, it added a prerequisite of killing 10 undead before Dorok will approach you to join the Dawn Guard. It also added acquisition of all three words of unrelenting force before the cultists from Solstein will approach you. Just little annoying things that maybe happen too early in the game when you're kind of underpowered. It also makes wearing a helmet or armor based hood as a vampire so that you don't take damage from the sun. Well, that's particularly helpful. You can continue reading the description on your own. We have landscape fixes for grass mods. We always need those. That needs to be at the top of your load order. We have dialogue bug fixes that um, this actually covers what the relationship dialogue overhaul mod covers for PC and Xbox. Um, fixes tons of dialogue. For example, if you marry a house Carl, they no longer refer to you as Thane. This actually complements the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, so you need both. And that Skyrim Restored will bring back a lot of um, cutting room floor content, restores locations, restores some NPCs in the world. Um, some of them you can have quite a bit of interaction with and also restores weapons and spells and scrolls into the world, as well as restored quest dialogue with NPCs. The Wilds of Skyrim, it's one of my favorite mods. It's a small mod that adds a lot of NPCs and activity into the wilds of the world. So you'll see more people on the roads, um, having different types of interaction. Thanks to some of my other mods, you can actually add some of these random adventurers 
as a follower. TLS Undollifier is a very simple mod that is supposed to remove blur effects from image space to bring a sharper scenery to Skyrim. I think it works. It brings cleaner lines to the graphics. We're trying to make Skyrim look as good as possible, right? Uh, especially for modding on PlayStation. We're adding enhanced draw distance so that we can see things in the distance a little bit clearer for more immersion, um, less blur in the background. But to support it, we're going to add obsidian mountain fogs, which will put a fog over the mountain tops. And if they are kind of blurry and um, images are still coming into focus, we don't notice them as much. Quaint Raven Rock is kind of a minor overhaul or more like an enhancement of Raven Rock and Solstheim adds new locations at Raven Rock and lots of new clutter, new things to see. Of course, we have to have the popular mod Lamppost of Skyrim, which lights up the road so we can see better as we travel. Point the way will actually make um, all of the road signs um, clearer, renewed, so that we can see which way we're going if we're not fast traveling. Immersive fallen trees adds dozens of fallen trees throughout the world just for immersion, making you know the foresty areas look nicer, more interesting. We'll add many landscapes for the same reason. This adds 26 mini landscapes across Skyrim, Solstheim, Sovngarde, and Blackreach for you to find, and there's loot at these tiny landscapes. Something new to discover in the world. We want Skyrim to be as different from vanilla as possible. We're also going to overhaul all the standing stones in the world. They're going to be more expansive, and there's going to be loot, possibly even some bad guys waiting for you at them. So when you go to Standing Stones or the Guardian Stones down, they're not going to be like you're used to them from vanilla. They're going to be entirely different. Nordic Ruins of Skyrim is going to overhaul the exteriors of uh, the Nordic Ruins throughout Skyrim, including Forlhost, Highgate Ruins, Labyrinthian, Ranvix Fast, etc. We can give them a new look. Kralix Bundle is interesting because it combines three um, different mods that overhaul um, a lot of the clutter and like tiny ruins and things you see along the road. It includes a Pathfinder Shack, which is located north of Windhelm, so a free player home for you. It has interesting roads and the second version of Ancient Lands, which puts huge uh, Nordic ruins all around Skyrim for you to see. Watchtowers of Skyrim adds four watchtowers out in the world with guards and loot. Good guards actually, like whole guards that won't attack you, but you can take whatever loot is there for free. Bridges of Skyrim replaces the old bridges from vanilla and completely redoes them. 30 unique bridges for you to see, just like the one leading out of Riverwood. They're all overhauled. We have tactical vault time. So that really interesting tower place guarded by a bunch of raiders is different, <laughs> way different, must see. Uh, I think I'll take you there in my playthrough next. Epic Enhanced Riverwood is um, by Imperial Agent. Adds a lot of clutter, cherry blossoms. I'll show it to you guys. It adds a few things just to make it look more foresty in Riverwood, kind of like how we like Whiterun. So we improved Whiterun River area outside. We fortified Whiterun. We also added White Run Expansion Redone, which is like an entire other town behind White Run. So in addition to adding a whole town behind the hold of White Run, we also redid the interior or the entrance area of White Run to make it look nicer. And we added the mod, the Autumn of White Run, which adds a ton of trees. 
usually when we add trees to these overhaul cities there's going to be some clipping somewhere with these trees because there's just too much clutter added by um, the city mod so but it looks really really nice and adds trees outside of the city walls as well jk skyrim all in one completely overhauls the exterior of whiterun windhelm solitude markarth pretty much every all of the holds in some uh, minor towns with the exception of dawnstar so we have the great city of solitude which redoes the docks outside of solitude so it does not clash the great city's dawnstar which overhauls dawnstar and gives it lots of fortification it's one of my favorite overhauls for dawnstar we have dragon bridge south which i will show you in a playthrough adds um some more living area across the dragon bridge whole capitals towns and villages um this adds some of the towns left out and who the player could visit in uh, elder scrolls arena game we are also overhauling Carth Weston, Kynes Grove, Orc Strongholds, Breeze Home in Whiterun. We're adding my favorite player home, Dawnstar Estate, which I will give you a tour of. And this is an interesting mod right here. This is a huge bundle mod called Looking Up at a Starry Sky. And this is our all-in-one texture pack. Um, it also includes um, white and green white run. So those will clash if you're using this. It also includes acid, which overhauls the rocks and um, the mountain textures in the world, making them look more realistic. This is our weather mod. This is our graphics mod. Um, this is our grass mod. This is predominantly our tree mod. Um, this is our sky rim is windy mod. This is our interior lighting mod. This is our volumetric and god rays mod. This is our time scale mod, music mod. This is our everything mod. I highly recommend it. It is very colorful. It does make the world look very fantastical, but you can make adjustments in a menu in game. Relighting Skyrim, I'm adding only to get rid of that really annoying flicker that we see sometimes with his which is a glitch like when we turn our heads to the right or left it seems like light from the fires are going out that breaks immersion and is really annoying so relighting skyrim actually fixes um, the way light works in the game and to complement looking up at what is it called looking up at starry Looking up at a starry sky, I gotta remember that. Uh, to complement it, we have Forest of Skyrim, adds tons of trees um, to the world, just making it look nicer and more foresty. Uh, mysticism and Adamant go together, they overhaul our perk tree, giving us more perks and better perks. Faster leveling lets us level up at least two and a half times faster than vanilla. Free crafting makes it so from the start of the game, we can pretty much craft any armor we want for the most part, except the modded stuff. They usually re remain, keep their uh, requirements, but we can craft without needing the perks and we can craft without having any of the materials like um, ebony, or dwarven or anything <laughs> let's see we got big ultimate kills which lets us decapitate and do some really sick moves um finishing moves we have one of my favorite mods big jump five times jump because it lets us jump really high and get to places that we normally can't get to and it lets us scale mountain size a little bit easier too get seriously overstocked um, merchants, you get richer merchants with um, even better stuff to sell at the start of the game. Get no more dead followers, you know what that means. It pretty much makes all of your uh, 
potential followers, all of your regular vanilla potential followers essential. Better combat AI makes combat a little bit more challenging, makes combatants a little bit smarter. Immersive movement makes player movement in the game a lot more realistic and also alters the movement of NPCs, including animals. Better horses just makes the horses better in the game. They're a little faster, more resilient, I believe essential. Enhanced Achanox um, improves the combat ability of Achanox in the game greatly, including the ones you can summon. Rewarding Reading, another one of my top five favorite mods. It pretty much turns every vanilla book that you find in the game automatically into a skill book. So it's definitely worth reading every book you see if you want to level up really, really quickly. Better dressed NPCs just makes common uh, named NPCs um, dress a little bit more appropriate to who they are and what they do in the world. Enhanced NPC perks. This is a unique one here. There's a couple of, well, I think there's about three different versions of these enhanced perks. Um, some of them change the faces of NPCs. Um, another one of them adds spells and gear, which is one of my favorites. But this is the one I've settled on for this particular load order because it doesn't cause gray face and the others do. Um, this gives perks to all potential NPCs, but it also does something else really special. Um, it removes the hoods from NPCs like Elia who we know from the vanilla game, we cannot get her out of her mage robes at all. Now she'll, we, she'll wear whatever armor we give her as long as we put like a circlet on her head or something like that. So um, if she's wearing a circlet, which looks nice on her, she'll wear whatever armor you give her now. So this is a helpful little mod to throw in here in the order that I'm showing you. <laughs> So below that, we have a guard dialogue overhaul, um, makes hearing them talk to us a lot less annoying. Above the law, one of my favorite mods, it means when you commit any crime in the world, especially now that one of our mods makes committing a crime extremely expensive, you'll have a dialogue option to just tell them to go away because you're above the law and they'll go away. You don't have to pay a bounty or go to jail. Marry me Serana lets you marry Serana because you can't do that in the vanilla game. These next two mods, Vampire Knights and Pathstalkers, are similar but different. Vampire Knights is really interesting. Um, it adds dozens of new vampire themed weapons and armor into the world. It adds um, eight new boss type encounters, um, a micro dungeon location in Solstheim. Um, it adds five new NPC followers for you to have, and it's really expansive, actually. So there's a lot to experience with Vampire Knights. Um, just a reason to add, you know, more NPCs in the world and a, more unique interactions. The same thing here with Pathstalkers. It adds another faction into the world as well, including three encounters with the Wild Hunt of Hercene. It adds new NPCs and locations for you to discover, um, as well as followers. The Orcs of Tamriel just is a small overhaul of Orcs. Um, mostly visually, they're taller than normal, as they should be bigger, and over 90% of the Orcs have face paints and war paints now. We're gonna add Khajiit kittens into the world and Argonian hatchlings. So these little ones, when you do come across them, they will sell you things, really good things like ingredients and crafting materials you wouldn't otherwise have access to from any of the other merchants in Skyrim. Because they're cool, all dogs in the world are now huskies. Except for Barbus, I believe, because, you know, he's integral to one of the quests. He's unchanged. 
<laughs> eruption, what eruption? This retextures Solstheim completely, including the Skull Village. So now there are actual stone roads throughout rather than just a lot of sand. Julie Hu's Dungeon Pack 1 and 2. These retextures the interiors of dungeons, the green caves, and the ruins. Increased blood amount adds a lot more blood um, splatter in the game. It lasts longer on weapons and armor. Rain and snow effects lets you see your armor wet or frosted over uh, depending on the weather. Next we have um, our audio mods starting with louder nature so you're going to hear birds and insects much louder now when you're traversing the world and it's very relaxing because you know that's what we do here we do the chill stuff very relaxing when you have the music turned off combat sound and attack impact both improves the sound of impact when you're smashing something with your weapon as well as add sparks to the game when you hit something like a shield or um, stone objects with your weapon. We're going to overhaul guard armor. Not really overhaul it, but replace it entirely so the guards look different. These two rings, <laughs> um, they're interesting. Um, the Ring of Peace, for one, you will find that in Riften. Um, at the Temple of Mara. This is just if you want to go through the world, um, say to record video content and you don't want anybody attacking you or interrupting what you're doing, you can actually stop all NPCs from fighting in the world by wearing this ring. Um, they won't fight each other either. So I don't know. Get it if you want it, but you probably didn't know it existed. So there you go. Then there's the ring of following. You can get one person, anybody, to follow you out in the world. Okay, so basically this ring allows you to make almost any NPC a follower, even a merchant. Wear multiple circlets, necklaces, rings, all that good stuff. I know wear multiple rings is a very, very popular mod, but I prefer this one because I can pretty much wear all the jewelry I want with no limits. And I can get all of the enchantments from all of them at the same time. I think this is really underrated. My next group of mods are bypass mods that let you skip dungeons that you will come across um, in, main, in the main game quests. So you can go right to the end of those dungeons and just finish whatever the task is, go back to the quest giver and just be done with it rather than check trekking through for like 30 to 35 minutes. The next mod is Beautiful Race Presets. This is the only mod I have here that actually changes the look of the player character. It just pulls a couple of hotties from every race male and female and let you pick presets from them. It's simple to the point, I prefer it. And then we have the famous cloaks of Skyrim. You need to have anniversary edition to run some of the next few mods I'm gonna show you. But this lets you craft cloaks as well as find some nice cloaks on bad guys out in the world. Simply more variety. Uh, this mod will attempt to integrate various items from a number of Creation Club releases into the game so that you can find them early. Um, all of the unique armors like Madness and Amber weapons and armor early in the game on bad guys. Fully swapped armors means that all of the vanilla armor that you would usually come across early in the game is now going to be their Creation Club versions. Dragon Priest Mask changes all of the perks on the Dragon Priest Masks, making them better. The same thing with Awesome Artifacts. It takes all of the quest weapons that you find out in the world and um, makes them significantly more powerful 
and useful. Weapons and Magic of Skyrim. This mod adds unobtainable and unused weapons, projectiles, enchantments, magic, and adds extras on top of that. So you can craft replicas of most unique legendary weapons now. Unique armors and weapons. The sort of is the same thing. Um, it adds faction armors for you to craft whenever you like. Hearthfire Homes adds features to the homes that you can uh, purchase or be awarded um, once you become Thane of a Hold. They look different, added clutter, they're a little rearranged, you know, something new to see. The next few mods just make the map look better. Um, let's see, Realm of Lorcan happens to be my favorite alternate start mod at least for playstation anyway um i like the fact that it's a little different from xbox whereas with playstation you can choose two classes to start the game as well as a boon an extra ability and join a faction to start your game so it gives you a great start to a game. You just don't have like a really deep, interesting backstory or anything, but um, I prefer Realm of Lorcan. And when I do a playthrough, I'll show you why. Multiple follower systems let you have up to 10 uh, human or humanoid followers in addition to five animal followers. Realistic conversations improves the conversations that are had between NPCs. Um, making them more coherent, less broken up. Immersive citizens improves the AI of the NPCs in the world. So their everyday behaviors are um, a bit more expanded, kind of like Serana. The Magical College of Winterhold is down here for a reason. When I have issues with certain mods, or I start experiencing glitches with them or they crash my game, I move them to the bottom and they tend to work themselves out. Magical College of Winterhold is one of those places I often have trouble fast traveling to. So I haven't had any issues with it down here, but um, with Xbox and PC, if you have JK's all in one, JK has already done some really cool stuff with the College of Winterhold that's similar. But on PlayStation, the College of Winterhold is untouched. So I have JK's all-in-one interiors right here, but it doesn't cover the interior of the College of Winterhold. So I have JK's interiors. So inns, uh, merchant shops, um, uh, Jarl, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but anyway, like the <laughs> the Yarrow palaces or whatever, they're all pretty much um, redone with JK's interiors. They look really nice and JK uses vanilla assets, which is great. It's not going to work though, unless you have JK's interiors, anniversary edition patch. And if you try to use JK's interiors without anniversary edition, good luck because the downstairs of your Vasker is like gone. So you can only get JK's interiors working perfectly with anniversary edition and with the patch. Then we have the oh so famous water, which just improves the look and flow of water in the game and waterfalls. Then we have TLS FPS Motherload, which is just going to improve our FPS as much as possible in the cities that we've completely overhauled at least. And last but not least, the mod that demands the very bottom of the load order, go away map clouds, which gets a, get rid of all of those clouds on our map so that we can see all of our map markers and the roads on the map much more clearly. So that's a hundred mods. If you made it this far, you are awesome. You are a chill person. Um, you're my kind of person. 
If you didn't, that's fine. I don't know. You wouldn't hear this anyway. But that's it. So stay tuned for the second part of this video where I give you a tour of the world without talking. And I'm going to show you many of these mods in action. Pretty much going to give you a tour of my mod at Skyrim. This is 2C40 Gaming. I'm T. Lindsay B. Until next time.